So I'm actually from Boston. Uh, I went to a place called Stonehill College. Um, there I got a degree in biology and pre-med. And actually I did a lot of um, volunteering, uh, both at uh, a VA hospital and something called the RFK uh, Society, which was like helping inner city kids. And so um, that meant a lot to me. I think that when you talk about things that influence you, you got to see, wow, what's going on. I grew up, I grew up pretty poor. I was in a military family. I had um, no, no, no one in my family had ever gone to college. So it was a big to-do that I was, um, and, and no, none of you know who Stone, what Stonehill is, but it's a fairly uh, prestigious school. Um, and so that, that really, I think, helped get me um, more involved in the community, um, sort of set a foundation of like wanting to be altruistic and giving back. Um, at the time, I actually um, befriended somebody who was a senior. I was a junior. Um, he was somebody that was a football player, and I was all like, oh, I wish I could be like this guy. And so he went on and took a job at a company called Cellcor. And that, that's where I sort of, um, he had left. I, I kind of contacted him later, said, how's it going? What are you doing? And that led to an internship. And that's sort of what started me. I went to work for this company treating metastatic renal cell carcinoma patients doing ex vivo autologous therapies. Wow, that's a mouthful. And it was a lot of fun. It was a small company. It was great. But what got me in there was networking. I've heard that word a little bit. But it was more than just networking. I had to be persistent with that individual. I really said, hey, how are you doing this? Who are you working for? That individual introduced me to the VP of R&D, and then I went and interviewed with the VP of R&D, and that led to the internship I ended up doing. Everybody else is a senior in college. They're all having fun. I'm spending 20 hours a week working at a company for free, commuting through Boston traffic. I don't know if that means anything to you, but that's some commitment, that's some sacrifice, and those are words, you, nothing, no one's going to give you anything. You're going to have to make some sacrifices. And so that really helped start my career. From there, I worked there for several years, worked my way up from a cell processing engineer one to a cell processing engineer two, and it's really, this was more of a, um, a manufacturing position. And all along the way, the guy I had interviewed who gave me the internship, I said, how am I going to get over there? And he had a, this thing called a PhD. I didn't even know what a PhD was. Stonehill had no graduate degrees, right? I had no one who could, similar situation in terms of trying to get into college. But all along the way, I had gifts in science, some skills in science and mathematics and things like that. That's very important. And then passion, and I'll talk more about that. But while I'm there, um, I, I go back to school, and I'm able to do my uh, research thesis uh, while at the University of uh, Lowell, I get to do my master's degree thesis at Cellcor. So again, I'm studying more. I start learning about what are called human anti-mouse antibody responses, and now it's what they call immunogenicity, which is a huge field within the industry. Every biologic product, every drug that's approved needs immunogenicity testing. Somehow in 1994, here I am studying it, right? Well, 20 years later, it's paying huge dividends. Um, and then lastly, I go to Pittsburgh, and all along the way, that first mentor helps me get the right university, the right school, the right program. He helps guide me there. Before I even get there, I'm already selecting the PI I'm in. Um, but th that doesn't mean I don't get curious, right? Even though I, I, I go to that PI, I, I uh, spend a rotation there, I still take advantage of rotating in multiple universities. And certainly be a sponge. Take in as much information while you're here. Go get curious. I was always that guy that sneak in the lab and be like, hey, what are you guys working on? You know, find out what people are doing, and that's another great way to network. Um, for professional experience, I mentioned Cellcor um, and some of the things I had done there. I also went on to work for, and, and, and I hear a lot of that with some of the people I'm talking about is there's a lot of volatility. Cellcor did close, right? I, I woke up, we came in one day, and chief scientific officer's like, yeah, the door's locked. You know, we ran out of funding. <laughs> well, that's not, that's pretty scary, but I'll talk more about how that, that doesn't have to be the case, right? And, uh, and Allegix is important to me because um, that's where I met my wife, and that has a lot of personal impact on things, and that's, some of you might be saying, how am I here? And I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. And, and then I worked for a company called Streck. Uh, I did not do a postdoc. I've never done a postdoc, but again, I used my career professional um, sort of experiences that helped while I was in graduate school to build into um, getting a position without having a postdoc. And then what brought me to Kansas City is um, Viracore IBT, or it was IBT Laboratories at the time. Now it's Viracore IBT. And they were getting into immunology and things like called Ellie Spots, and I had a lot of experience there, and this job just read like my resume. Um, and, and I could tell a little story about that. I actually, um, well, maybe I'll, I'll save that for a second. And then lastly, I came to uh, KCAS. So all along the way, I had some... Um, They've called me a geek who can speak. And so the current position, I'm sort of a liaison from the science to the business. So I, I'm technically like really a salesman these days. But I still get to use my PhD quite a bit. Um, I still have to go in front of like, 
you know, 30 scientists at a real big company and I got to go in there and I'm like, oh, but you know, now I'm pretty calm and poised and it's no big deal because they need my help, right? That's the approach I sort of take. These guys are struggling with their bioanalytical work. They need a lab that can help them and KCS is a great lab about solving and uh, um, bringing value to people. So um, I, I make a big switch. 20 years as an operation person and here I am, uh, 40 plus years of age, really reinventing myself. And, and that's another theme. I'm still trying to reinvent myself. I, th I think I know more of what I don't like to do than what I do like to do. But taking that transition into business development, or essentially sales, was a, was a risk, right? Uh, my family was like, what are you doing? My wife was what I'm doing. But me, for me personally, I knew it was where my calling was. But, but I want to emphasize, I wanted to put in as much work at the bench itself, because that was really what, what led me to where I am now and led to the success I'm having now because it, uh, I'm doing a highly technical sale, but without that 20 years as being an operations guy, I wouldn't be able to, to succeed where I'm at. Um, and, and there are others who get into this who, who are struggling. Like we have some reps who aren't, they, they're like, I don't know if I can do what you're doing. Um, but, but somewhere in there, I think if you're, if you're an outward facing person, if you're an extrovert, still stay in the lab, get your techniques, get your experience before you start doing, thinking about things outside of the laboratory. You gotta pigeonhole yourself if you move outside a lab too early and you don't like it. So this, hopefully some advice there. Um, I'm a very curious individual. I'm an adventurous individual. Drives my wife nuts at times because uh, it's impacting our 11 year old who's being more adventurous. However, I'm not afraid of failure at all. And certainly one thing is no one's keeping score anymore. Like no one, like if I screwed up this presentation, I'm not gonna go home and beat myself up about it, right? There is no grade anymore. You just, your, your beliefs and your perceptions are, are what things are, not, not what you are all thinking about me in the audience. Um, and then I, I, one of the things that drives me is when someone tells me I can't do something. And so I hear a lot of people like, how do I get an internship? Or how do I do these things? All the internships I got, I created myself. I went out and did it. Like other people had, uh, the university I was at might have had one or two internships that other students were getting. Well, I wasn't a top student. I wasn't, the, uh, wasn't always the most, um, in line with the process of the university, if that makes sense to some of you. So I had to go out and do it myself. And I got a lot of people that said, well, you can't do this. And I'd say, well, why can't I do that? Well, um, you know, they say, and now I'm hearing a lot of wells in your nose, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. And so I ended up doing most of it on my own. And again, I'll talk a little bit on the next slide about how some of that can be there. But failure is great too, and don't be afraid of failure. Make yourself uncomfortable. Stay out, if, if you're in a comfort zone, you're never gonna grow. You gotta, you, you gotta challenge yourself almost daily to get out of your comfort zone. Even being here is outside of my comfort zone a little bit, because I haven't given a talk in quite some time, and I didn't know what, I, what to expect when I came up here today. But, Either way, good or bad, take something from it. You're in the lab, you get a poor result from an experiment, that really does still help you, at least in my experience. Most of, the, most of the time, when an experiment went wrong, I went, wait a minute, we didn't see this coming, and you end up learning more from it. Um, <clears throat> so, one of the, someone once said to me, how did you end up finding, you moved around a lot, how did you find all these jobs? And really, interning is a way to go. It's hard though, you are gonna have to get creative. Um, um, the, one, of the, one of the questions I'm getting asked is, or what I'm hearing from, because I was here last night and even at the lunch today, people are saying, well, I'm applying for a job online and I'm not having any access. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. What I did at uh, both the University of Pittsburgh, STREC, as well as Viracor, I um, called the company, like cold called them, and got like somebody on the phone and, and I said, Hey, what's it like working there? <laughs> I'm down to a minute, huh? <laughs> um, what was it like working there? And, and they said, they, they'd give you some response, but somewhere in there I had an alternative mode. I said, well, I'm interested in the position on, uh, online. I said, um, I see a position. Um, is there someone I could talk to? And eventually I ended up getting to that person, right? So now I'm separating myself significantly from the pack. And that led to just about every job I had gotten. Um, in fact, at uh, IBT, when I cold called, I ended up getting to the director who eventually hired me. So again, it was, my advice is to try many, many calls if you need to. Um, confidence, it's always been a strength of mine, but I'm learning to be more humble. And that's, humility is a hard thing. There's a fine line between the two. If you ask me what my weakness is, sometimes I'm not humble enough. And then passion, I think all of you can hopefully see that in me. I love science, have a, a, an incredible um, thirst for it. I uh, just really, really, really love it. Um, and then I've relied on a lot of mentors. 
um, networking, uh, big into, um, I, I, got, I have on here for those that were interested in the Kansas, the bio Kansas and the Heartland bio break. That's a great area for you guys to get out and network. I go to probably 50 to 60% of those. There's a lot, if you want to meet people from some of the local companies, they're there, like Aratana and La Carta and all these other small little companies that are doing some great research. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Here's my take home message. <laughs> um, openness to learn. This, these are the things that I try to uh, get better at and grow from. Um, a willingness to work with others. Uh, do whatever it takes to succeed. A spirit of gratitude. A willingness to delay gratification. Remember where you came from, and if you're not dying, you are growing. And these are really some um, very powerful things that have really helped me um, transition from a scientist to a salesman, which I really haven't touched on, but that was a big sort of like, the, the amount of failure I received as a salesman was so hard the first six to eight months. And then I started realizing, wait a minute, I, I, I'm beating myself up today because I got a no, but three months later they ended up buying from us or, or, or wanting to per work with us. So why am I getting so down on this day, yet I really won the business on that day? Maybe that's a little hard to understand, but don't ever like let your self-esteem fall down because you're hearing no's and things like that. If you send out 100 resumes and you get nothing from it, then send out 200. You know, somewhere in there it's gonna, it, it, it'll, it'll, you'll break through if you continue to um, rely on mentors, network, try a process. If that's not working after five times, you, you gotta evolve and try it differently. Um, and, and then I'll leave you with, someone said, hey, I applied for a job online and didn't get it. Well, when you go into a lab and an experiment fails, do you just throw your hands up and say, oh, I'm not going to try this again? You know what I mean? You got, when the experiments aren't working, you start getting creative and you start digging in and you start doing more and more. Same thing when it comes for looking for a job. No one's going to give it to you. You're going to have to work hard for it, no matter what network or mentor you have, because all of them have helped me, but eventually it was me who had to get through that door. Um, so I'll, I'll take some questions. I'll be around, but that's it. Thank you.